Good morning, friends. I am Vikrant Manchanda from MIT International School, Mayur Vihar. My topic is stimulating young minds by the use of hands-on activities. Now, science is learning by doing. Science is all around us. Science is not something that is just taught in the classrooms or demonstrated at science fairs. Our ordinary moments are full of science. Students must understand. They should know when and why of the things that are happening around us. Science has, there is a lot of problems that as a teachers we are facing in teaching science. Sometimes there are so many derivations, learning science becomes boring. We have to change this framework of mind. We have to make the science interesting. For this purpose, I keep on developing some hands-on and low-cost experiments. Now experiments can be basically categorized into two categories. They are they are traditional experiments. Now let me explain what are traditional experiments and hands-on experiments. Traditional experiments are routine experiments. They are mechanical. They are done with a certain set of instructions. They are done in the lab. They are cognition oriented. Next is the hands-on experiments. Now these hands-on experiments, they are motivation oriented. They don't have any boundaries. You can use any low cost material. Student can even devise their own experiment. There is no rules and settings for these experiments. They are just free. When the students do these experiments, they not learn physics, but they enjoy physics. Purpose is that the students should enjoy a subject so that they develop interest in it and they go in for further research. Now my research methodology is that I collect whenever I go in some seminar or in some workshops, I, I just see the experiments and then after seeing that I develop their apparatus. Some ideas are also given in NCRT books. You can make apparatus out of them. Now I have developed around 50 such low cost experiments and I would love to teach everyone of these teachers these experiments so that they can be shown to the every class, to the every student, so that the students they enjoy learning physics. Now in my this presentation, I will be showing around 10 such experiments. My first experiment is on the law of conservation of momentum. You just need a simple material for this, that is two plastic scales and some marbles. These marbles should be of equal sizes. Now as you can see that, when I hit two marbles, the two moves. When I hit one, the one will move. So this can be used to explain the law of conservation of momentum. Now my next activity is to measure reaction time. By using this activity, I can judge in my class who is the best driver. Reaction time is the response time to which a person re responds to a particular situation. Like if I am dropping a scale, then the distance through which I catch it, I can be able to measure the reaction time. The next experiment is on the collision ball experiment. For this, you have to take a, take a basketball and a tennis ball and you can place them aligned together. When you throw them, you will see that the lighter ball will shoot. It will transfer the energy, the heavier ball has transferred the energy to the lighter ball. The next experiment is a, a balloon jet experiment that is showing the, you can see that the lighter ball is jumping up. This is a balloon jet experiment. Now this can show the Newton's third law of motion clearly. You can see that we have make a balloon jet from a straw and a balloon. It costs very less and when the balloon will propel, you can easily see the action and reaction forces that are acting on it. Now this is a very simple activity. You can show refraction to the students. We just need a coin and a bowl. You ask the student to move backward and when the coin just disappears, you can add water. The coin will be raised. It will appear again. Now you can show chromatic aberration. This is the, uh, chromatic aberration to the students. You know that the white light is made up of seven different colors, but these colors have different refractive index. So they focus at different points. For showing chromatic aberration, you need a convex lens. You have to paste it black so that the light uh, refraction takes place from the periphery. And then you can see that in this, uh, the violet and the red colors and they are focused at different points because their refractive index is different. These are the some experiments on electricity. This is a class 12th experiment. On LCR experiment, you take an inductor, capacitor and a resistance. You can change. As you can see here, you can change the values of L and C and you can note down the brightness of the bulb. 
with the change in the value of L and C, XC and XL will change, this will change the brightness. Next is an electric the conducting duct experiment, it's a very simple experiment in which I have made a conducting duct. This is a very low cost, I took it from the mess and then uh, I made it in a salt solution. You can use it as wires, you can change the, what you can do is that you can change the length and the thickness of the duct and you can study the factors affecting resistance. This is to verify Kirchhoff's law, this is a 12th class numerical, I made a cube out of 12 wires, I can show that the resistance across the diagonally opposite ends is 5 by 6 R, across the edge is 7 by 12 R. This is the elephant toothpaste experiment, a very interesting activity in chemistry. You have to take hydrogen peroxide in a conical flask, then add some food color and liquid soap and in the other flask you can take yeast along with warm water. When you mix the two, hydrogen oxide is a very strong oxidizing agent. The bubbles will come out and you can see the paste foaming out. Now these all experiments are open ended, students can also design their own suggestions. There are many other experiments which I also developed. You can mail me, I will give you how to use them in the class. These experiments, they will really make the students learn, they will enjoy the subject. This analysis I did on my one section, as you can see that in the learning process has increased by doing these experiments. This was done on a 5 point scale, 5 being maximum and 0 being the minimum. As you can see in the evaluation also that when I took the test, out of 10 marks I converted into 5 marks and the students who performed the test when the activity was shown, the marks were more and without activity the marks were less. The same survey I did on the other section and you can increase, show that in the graph, the red histogram is showing that with the activity the learning has increased. As you can take the examples of this student that Naman, he got 4 with the activity and without activity he is getting 3. So in all the students I analyzed, I asked them a question that uh, say a derivation, they were not able to write it but I, when I asked about the reaction time which I taught them in the month of April without with showing an activity they were able to recall. The evaluation was also done and it, the results are clearly showing that if you do teach physics with activity and perform a very simple activity like if I have this bottle. If I make three holes in it with the, with the help of a compass, I can very easily show that the pressure depends on depth. These activities, these experiments, they don't require any set of specific instructions. They have no boundaries. The students should enjoy physics and with this, I conclude my presentation and I thank you all. Sabko namaskar.